Good day folks, in this video today we are going to be taking a look at different drives and their compatibility with the new iOS 13 update. When Apple introduced iOS 13 in the spring, one of its big new features is that it now supports external drives. You can plug an external drive into your iPad and have it appear in your files app just like a traditional hard drive. So in this video we're going to take a look at what drives work and what drives don't, how to transfer your media over via the files app. So let's just jump right in and take a look. So as stated, that was one of the nice new features of iOS 13, and that's the ability to plug in an external drive and use it for additional storage. You can copy files from it and you can copy files to it. For myself, it's really important because I do all my video editing, 100% of my video editing on my iPad Pro. So just being able to back up footage and have additional storage is a great new feature. From the testing I have been doing, not all drives work the same. So I'm gonna kind of go over that as we go along here and do some demonstrations. The other nice thing is you can connect things like drones and cameras directly to the iPad iPad and have them show up as a drive. So we're going to take a look at that as well. So we're going to start off with two very popular discs. This is the SanDisk Extreme SSD and this is the Samsung T5. Both of these are solid state drives. They have no moving parts and they are a little bit more durable than a traditional drive with a disc. And they're also a lot smaller and more portable. So we're going to plug in the first disc and then test it out. But before we move on to compatibility of other drives and thumb drives, I'm just going to show you a quick overview of the Files app and how to move documents around. I'm using the iPad Pro 2018 model with USB-C so if you have an iPhone or a lightning version iPad uh, your results are going to be a little bit different than mine. So I got the SanDisk drive attached to a USB-C cable and we're just going to plug it in and you can see over here on the left hand side it's come up right away it says extreme SSD so we can click on that and you can see here it's just like a normal hard drive we've got all our file structure and uh, we can bring up the video. As you can see here, it plays just fine. Sometimes they get a little choppy, but for the most part, they play just nicely. Now to keep this video short, I'm not gonna demonstrate this for every drive playing files and that, but I just wanna show you here quickly how to move things around. So right now we're looking at videos off the drive here. There's a couple different ways we can move files around. We can actually just click on the single file. We can copy it, we can duplicate it, or we can move it here. So we could move it to different cloud storage, or we can move it directly to our iPad. If you don't see a folder there that you wanna move it into, you can actually create a new folder. You can see there I just created the folder called Backup. So now we hit Copy and it's gonna move it over. Now it's just making a copy of it. So it's gonna leave the original on the drive here and it's gonna make a copy of that on the iPad. So you can see there it's done. So now if we go to my iPad, I've got the folder there called Backup and there's the file there. You're also able to move multiple files at once. And we do so by clicking the select button there at the top. And then we just check the files that we want to move. And then down there, you can see where it says move. It works the exact same way. We would just then browse to the appropriate folder and hit copy and it will move all the selected files over. But iOS 13 and the iPad Pro also support drag and drop. One of the new features that was introduced with iOS is the ability to have multiple instances of the same app running in split view. And that makes dragging and dropping a lot easier. So I'll just demonstrate that here for you now quickly. So I have the files app open here. And uh, what I'm going to do is just swipe up a little bit just to bring up our dock. And I have my files app. You can see I already have it docked there. We're just going to touch it and drag it over to the side. Just like that. And you can see when I bring it over there how the screen splits. And then we're just going to drop it. So now we have two instances of the files app running. On the left hand side here you can see I'm still browsing the SSD card. And on the right hand side we can uh, select any kind of drive that we want to choose. And I'm going to go to that backup folder that I created. I have it empty now. And uh, we're going to transfer these files over here. So we can drag one file at a time just by pressing down on it and pulling it over, just like that. You can see it's going to start to copy it. So there it is there. It's all copied over. But we can do the same thing with uh, multiple files. So we hit select again. And I'll copy these three files. And again, we're going to press and then drag over. You can see that there's a little three there on the file and we just drop it. It's going to take a few minutes but it will copy all three over. And there we go, they're all copied over. So that is a super handy feature in iOS 13. So let's take a look at some other drives here. Here is the Samsung T5. This is also an SSD drive. We can just plug it in. Sometimes you got to wait a minute for the drives to pop up and uh, there it is there. 
you can see that uh, we can bring up different photos and again we can play video files so the Samsung Drive works quite nicely as well so either one of these drives is a great choice to be using with your iPad Pro the USB-C version they are kind of pricey to purchase but just keep an eye on Amazon as they do go on sale every once in a while so the next drive I've got here is a Lacey this is a four terabyte now this is not an SSD this is just an HDD so it's got an internal disk in it uh, it's their rugged series so they are still fairly durable you do have to be somewhat careful with them and we can plug it in as well and uh, it should pop up here momentarily and there we go there so now I've got two other drives here that we're going to test out these are the Western Digital my passport wireless both these drives are identical in features however this one here is an SSD drive and again this one is a traditional HDD so it has an internal disk and again a big price difference this one here is one terabyte this one here is a three terabyte and uh, this one here was like a third of the cost so SSDs are always going to cost you a lot more now why these drives are really interesting and uh, very popular with photographers and videographers this is a multi-purpose drive first off you can plug it into your laptop or computer and it will function just as any 3.0 hard drive these drives have a built-in battery and can broadcast their own Wi-Fi signal and that was handy in the past because you could connect your iPad or iPhone to it and transfer files back and forth but now with iOS 13 and the new updates you don't need to do that it's much more convenient just to plug it in what really makes these drives stand out is as you can see here they have a built-in memory card reader so if you're out on location and you want to back up your memory you can just plug your memory card directly into the drive because it has its own battery it will just automatically start to offload to the drive without any interaction then when you get home all your files are on a hard drive ready to be edited so that's super handy now this next bit of information is very important so it's something you definitely want to make note of when I was initially testing these drives I could get this drive to work with no issues I plugged it in and it recognized it right Away. however this drive it would not recognize the SSD just could not be picked up by the files app I wasn't quite sure what was going on so I had to do a little bit of research and it turns out the standard disk drive is formatted in XFAT whereas the SSD version is formatted in Windows NTFS so that is really important to know any drive that is formatted with Windows NTFS will not work by plugging it into the files app so if you have any drives that you're trying to plug in and they're not being recognized by the files app chances are it's formatted in NTSF you'll have to reformat the drive in XFAT for it to be able to be picked up by the iPad now just keep in mind when you format it you're going to delete everything on that drive now unfortunately with these ones I wouldn't recommend reformatting them because there is quite a extensive file structure on them already if you do format it you may end up losing the functionality of using that memory card reader to transfer over your content so I'm just going to demonstrate these ones for you quickly now before we continue we're going to have to use this dongle that Apple sells this is a USB-C to USB-A. If you have the iPad Pro and you plan on connecting different hard drives to it, this is something you might want to invest in. It allows you to connect all your traditional hard drives that have a USB-A port to your iPad. It also does allow you to connect things like thumb drives. And I'm going to take the cable that came with these hard drives. It's that uh, kind of got that weird end on it. It's got a micro USB and mini USB kind of put together. Now we'll plug it into the dongle and it should appear here in the files app in a moment. And as you can see there it is there the my passport now of course we can go into the my passport you can see there i have a folder called sd card imports that's where all the files go when you use the uh, auto import feature of the uh, hard drive so yeah it'll work just the same way we can select our files transfer them to where we need them to be so now i'm going to plug it into the ssd version and you're going to see here uh, the light comes on so it is getting power but you'll notice here it's just not going to appear in our locations so now I just have a variety of different thumb drives here and we're going to test them out to see how they perform so first off I want to take a look at this little thumb drive here now if you are in the market for one this is the one that I recommend I use it all the time it's 256 gigabytes and you can see there it's by SanDisk and what I like about this one is that it's very compatible with a lot of different devices first off it has a little switch here if you can see that there on camera and if we slide it up it reveals a USB-C connector but we can switch it the other way and it has a USB-A connector so it's very compatible with a lot of different computers and laptops it works very well with the iPad Pro and the files app let's just plug it in there again it'll take a minute for it to uh, pop up there it is there and we can go in we can see our footage this is a 4k 60 frames per second file and it plays it just fine and of course we can go through and move things around as need be so we have a couple other thumb drives here and this one here is very interesting and again it's something that you might want to pay close attention to now this one here is by Lexar and it's a USB 3.0 drive so it has a USB-A port on it there 
Um, it's 256 gigabytes. Because it does have a USB-A connector on it, we have to plug it into the Apple dongle. But when I first plugged it in and I was testing it, it wasn't being recognized by the iPad. So I plugged it into my laptop and sure enough, again, this uh, drive was formatted as NTFS. I think I might have done that myself at some point because I was trying to put some large files on there. But again, that's just very important if you have any thumb drives that are not being recognized by your iPad or your iPhone, if you're using an iPhone, definitely check to make sure that it is formatted in XFAT. And that's what I did. I reformatted it and you'll see here now that it'll work just fine. There it is there. Now I purposely grabbed this thumb drive to test in this video. Um, the reason being is that this is a very old thumb drive. It's uh, 16 gigabytes, it's the Cruise Blade, and uh, this thing has to be at least 10 years old. It had to have been 2009 or 2010 that I purchased it, maybe even earlier. But I just wanted to demonstrate that if you have old thumb drives kicking around, uh, they still work just fine as well. You can see there I've got it plugged in, and it should pop up. Yep, and there it is there. So that's good to know that it will work with older thumb drives as well. Now lastly, I'm not going to demonstrate this one because it works just the same way. Uh, if you have any of these kind of memory card readers, uh, this one here is by Lexar. It came with some memory, I think, once when I purchased it many years ago. They work great as well. All you do is you put your memory card in. Now because this is a USB-A version, I do believe they come in USB-C as well. We have to use the dongle. And uh, you can connect it and it'll read your memory card as well. So it's very handy and very compatible with many different uh, devices and drives. Now the other thing you can do here, you can take Apple's uh, card reader to USB-C on an iPad or Lightning if you're going to be connecting it into an iPhone. And you can plug your memory cards directly into it and read them within the Files app. So I'll just show you that here. We'll plug it in. And again, it'll take a minute for it to appear on the side. There it is there. Just comes up as Untitled. But we can go into the uh, file structure here and bring up our files. So we can view our videos and photos directly off the memory card. Again, we can also move them over to the Files app or we can uh, move them into our camera roll. Now if you're a GoPro user and you happen to own the USB-C uh, card reader, we can put the memory card in it, plug it in, and you'll see here in a minute that it works as well. There it is there. And again, we can bring up all our files. Now, speaking of GoPros, you can actually plug in certain cameras and uh, you can actually read the files right off the camera. Now, what's really interesting here is I've got a GoPro Hero 7 Black and I've got the new Osmo Action that was released in the spring. And uh, the Osmo Action works perfectly, but the Hero 7 Black, I cannot get the iPad to read it. I'm not sure if older versions of GoPros will work, uh, the Hero 6, Hero 5. I haven't tested that yet, but uh, it is possible. But I'll just show you here quickly. So we'll start with the GoPro. I'm going to plug USB-C into that end. And then another USB-C into the iPad. We'll power it on. Now it gives us a message that it is USB connected, but we could sit here all day and it's not going to appear as a drive. So that is a little disappointing. The Hero 8 is going to be out uh, next week and uh, maybe it will work. But the Osmo Action does work just fine. I'll just demonstrate that here for you. We will plug it in and uh, we're going to power it on. Now with the Osmo Action, we have to confirm the connection on the back here. I'll show you here in a second. You can see here, connect to computer and we have to hit accept. If we don't hit accept, it won't pop up. You can see there, it is there. And uh, again, we can bring up all our files. So two last things we're going to test here, and that is the Osmo Pocket by DJI. And we've also got the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. So let's start here with the Osmo Pocket. We're going to plug it in, and then uh, we'll power it on. You can see there it's popped up right away to accept the connection to a computer. And uh, there we go. There is our footage. So there we go. There's all our files and footage. And again, we can move them over the same way. So the Osmo Pocket works well when you connect it to your iPad. So let's try the Mavic 2 Pro here. I'm just going to unfold it so we can power it on. On the side here of the Mavic 2 Pro, you can see we have a USB-C port. So we'll plug in the cable there. We'll just let it do its thing. Might get a little noisy here because uh, the fan running on the drone. you can see there when it actually powers on it actually lists two different drives and I believe that's to do with the internal storage the Mavic 2 Pro has internal storage and it also has the SD card so you just have to figure out which one is which because it doesn't really label uh, if we go to no name it's empty so that will be the internal storage and if I click on untitled there's all my footage there so that'll be the memory card well, folks, that's basically it for my video. Hopefully you found this video informative. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.